I'll tell you a secret. Not all engineers are the same. And do you want to know the one thing that sets 10x engineers apart from regular engineers? In this video, we'll be exploring the one thing that 10x engineers do differently compared to the rest of the industry and how you can incorporate this into your own work and become a more effective and a more successful engineer. Just as a side note, you can also help me become a 10x YouTuber by subscribing to this channel right now. Okay, let's dive right in. What is the definition of a 10x engineer? A 10x engineer is a highly skilled and productive engineer that consistently delivers results that are 10 times better than those of their peers. Isn't that what we all want? They often receive the best rating the company offers, extremely fast promotions, if they get hired as a junior engineer, and they usually have much higher salary than a typical engineer at the same company. Sounds great, no? If you want that too, stay tuned because at the end of the video, I'm going to share five tips on how you can start practicing these thought patterns to also become a 10x engineer and have those amazing ratings, those promotions and the high salaries. Okay, but before we dive in, I wanted to remind you to be patient with yourself because you're probably watching this thinking how you can put your own career on a fast track right now, but you may actually not be at the right opportunity to become a 10x engineer at this very moment. I'm saying this because I've watched people grow so much after they work in an area that actually connects with their skills. I'll give you an example. I was once mentoring a junior engineer that was working on a front-end team. They picked this team mainly because front-end was the thing that they felt most comfortable with because the school that they went to gave them a lot of front-end homework. However, after a couple of months, that engineer started struggling because they realized that front-end is actually not something that they really enjoy. Eventually, this showed up in their performance, which is why they talked to me as a mentor. And when we started diving into their options, I realized that they started making really smart and interesting comments on the back-end infrastructure problems that their team was solving. So eventually, we got to the conclusion that they should change their role. And now this person is actually a highly respected staff engineer on the same team. So sometimes you're not set up for success and you need to take a risk in order to get to the position, 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 position that you want to be at. What's happening? Now, 10x engineers do lots of things well. And while some of those skills are also focusing on growing people around them, the skill that sets them apart the most is really focused on their own personal experience and how the person organizes their mind. So here we go. This is the one thing that they do differently and much better than most engineers on the planet. The one thing 10x engineers do differently is impact evaluation and management. If you don't know what that means, keep listening. 10x engineers are highly focused and they prioritize their time and energy on the most impactful tasks while keeping the big picture in mind. They usually have a clear vision of what they wanna do, what they wanna accomplish, and also they're not afraid to take risks and try new approaches to achieve their goals. So just because they don't know something doesn't mean that they won't do it. Does that mean that you have to work 24 seven and just produce a ton of code to become a 10X engineer? Absolutely not. It means that they know where to put their value and what kind of time is needed to generate the outcome that they want. Typically they're extremely good at estimating how long something will take and then they evaluate if that time is actually worth doing the project. Typically, they're also extremely picky with the teams that they work at and the projects that they put effort into because before they even take on a project, they evaluate if it's going to be worth their time. In addition to the impact management pieces, 10x engineers always are the people on the team with the highest initiative. They usually don't wait for someone else to tell them to do something, but instead notice that something doesn't work as it should, point it out proactively and propose a solution. They also don't wait for the manager to tell them what to work on. Most of them come up with projects themselves because they always look at the tech stack, they look at the code base, they look at what other people are writing and what they're struggling with, and they work on those gaps and understand those gaps and fill them. Finding those 10X engineers is extremely rare, but when you see one of them, you just know it. You don't have to get convinced. You see what they do with the team. You see how they contribute to the roadmap. You see how they contribute to the code base. And you know, okay, this is a different type of engineer. Often, those are the engineers that actually make it to the really, really high levels because that's the expectation of those high levels. So if you've ever wondered how to get to staff level, how to get to senior staff level, etc., this video is basically telling you how. And now, if you actually want to get there, if you want to become a 10x engineer, if you want to become a really, really senior engineer eventually in your career, follow the next five tips. The first thing you want to put your focus on is automation. Automate, automate, automate. A 10x engineer is not a person that copies and pastes the same code more than three times. 
It's a waste of time in their opinion. Instead, when they notice, okay, I'm writing a bunch of the same code all the time, they start automating this process through custom scripts, or they start implementing unit tests, they start implementing more automated tests, or they even automate the processes around them. For example, how they communicate with their manager, how they communicate with their team, how they kick off QA testing, etc. The second thing you need to do is take many smart risks. 10x engineers are often the ones taking on the most risky projects, not only on your team, but also in your organization. But why does it work out for them, even if their projects fail? Well, they often don't just take on one of those projects, they take on five of them at the same time. Because this means the chances of one of those projects succeeding is much higher. In addition, they also make a ton of contributions to the reliability of their team. So if one of those risky projects doesn't work out, they still have a lot to show on how they made the code base better of the team. The third thing you want to do is show initiative and show up. If you want to become a 10x engineer, you need to learn how to show initiative. You can't just sit around and wait for things to happen. You need to be more productive with everything that you do. As I said before, if you're currently waiting for projects from your manager, you need to change that. It's not going to happen. You're not going to make it to a 10x engineering role. You're not going to make it to senior staff level if you just wait for your manager to hand you projects. You need to go into the code base. You need to analyze the product that you're working on. You need to analyze the backend systems that you're working on. Find the problems and fix them proactively. The fourth tip I have for you is take your productivity extremely seriously. This means focus on what makes you the most productive and defend it. If it's a three hour meeting block every day that keeps you away from distractions, let your team know that this is what you need. You need to start taking accountability for your own productivity. You can't just blame, oh, my team has too many meetings. I can't get anything done. No, you need to speak up. You need to tell people, hey guys, my calendar is a mess right now. I have no time for coding. We need to change this. I'm pretty sure your manager will listen to you if you have a good suggestion. So start suggesting this. Start defending your own time and stay consistent with it. 10X engineers often have daily code contributions. So if you're at a weekly contribution rate right now, you need to step up your game. The last tip I have for you here is understand the problems your senior management is trying to solve. So instead of just looking inside of your little team bubble, you start looking for opportunities outside of that bubble. Try to figure out what your organization or company is struggling with and start small side projects here and there that will set you apart from other engineers on your team. Really make it a habit. Look at the big picture. Listen to all the other engineers around you and help them. Really try to fix the problems that they're doing. And you might think, oh, this is not what I'm paid for right now, but this is how you get promoted in tech. You need to showcase the work before, and then you get the raise, then you get the promotion, then you get the good rating. So really practice this now, make it your thing and work on those projects if you wanna get to those levels. In conclusion, I think in my own career, I have had one 10X engineering project. I was once finding a huge problem in the code base of my team. And by fixing this, it was actually just a one line change it actually contributed to 50% of my team's goal in that cycle, 50% with one line. And the secret here was I was really diving deep in trying to figure out what was wrong and then it generated impact for the team with the minimal time possible. To recap, what 10X engineers do differently is they're highly focused and they're willing to take risks to achieve their goals. Try to incorporate this mindset into your own work because you wanna become more effective and you wanna become more successful, right? Also, I'd love to hear your own tips, your own strategies and your own stories about your 10X engineering story. And I'd love for you to write a comment below. Thank you so much for listening and don't forget to subscribe.